My uh, colleague, Gotti Schwartz, he's in Radio Island, North Carolina. It's, it's literally four times as windy there. At one point, as I understand it, Gotti, you were experiencing uh, roughly 60 mile per hour wind gusts. Is that still the case there? Yeah, get that Kestrel ready because this is this is what's coming your way, Craig. Uh, 61 miles at Beaufort, which is right over there. You see that line of trees. That's Beaufort over there. Uh, then we've got these docks over here that are just taking a pound, and you've got that dock flexing. We've seen these docks start to break apart again. This is a 60 mile an hour, maybe a little bit higher than 60 miles an hour, uh, but we're expecting twice as high winds as this right now. You can uh, imagine what that's going to be like. That's going to hit tonight, uh, and it's also going to hit during the storm surge. So not only are we going to have these uh, hurricane force winds that are twice as strong as they are right now, we're also going to have uh, this, the ocean, the sea come up. We're expecting it to come up about seven feet, seven and a half feet here, which is unprecedented for this area of North Carolina. The last time they had some really bad conditions like this uh, was a hurricane in the 1950s. And, and during that hurricane, uh, the storm surge got to about uh, six, about 6.94 uh, feet high. This one is expected to be seven and a half feet. So there are going to be areas that see extreme flooding. There's going to be areas uh, that see a, a lot of that storm surge sweep in. There are some uh, businesses in town over here at Moorhead City where, where they're talking about actually uh, getting chainsaws and cutting open parts of, of the floors so that that storm surge comes in and it doesn't rip apart uh, some of those structures. Uh, but this is an area that is going to take a really bad pounding in most of that that is going to happen under the cover of darkness. So as bad as the situation is right now, the situation is going to get a lot worse. Craig? All right. Uh, Gotti Schwartz there uh, in, in Radio City. Gotti, do be careful, sir. Gotti um, alluding to that uh, hurricane back in the 50s. That, that, that one is still very much uh, the storm that all of them have been compared to here in North Carolina, Hurricane Hazel. MSNBC's Garrett Hake is also on duty for us. He is in New Bern, North Carolina, that town already fighting a battle with the Noose River. Uh, Garrett, who's winning the battle right now? Uh, Craig, right now I'd say the town's probably fought it to a draw, but this is what they have to compete against, the Noose River here. This is a different scenario than on the coast here, where our sur storm surge here in New Bern is going to come from the river itself, not from the coast, and the town is nestled up against the river on two sides. And so what you have to deal with here is this storm surge that's going to come down the river as it rains and water comes down, the storm surge pushing back up. Every little bit of rain we get and every little bit that that storm pushes closer will move more and more water here onto the street where I am on Front Street, sort of the street where a lot of these historic homes come up against the water. A lot of these residents have already left. These are people who've lived here a long time. They know what they're up against. This is uh, this home here is about 240 years old. We were here when the owner was boarding it up. He and his wife headed to Raleigh to ride this thing out. They are absolutely not playing around with this storm. Some words of warning from the owner of this house, Benjamin Bunn, who we inter interviewed a little while ago. Take a listen. There's nothing we can do here. When winds get above three digits, the only thing you can do inside your house is die. You can't do anything else. So, Seems why like stay? So, Craig, we are seeing a lot of people here heed that evacuation warning. When the category of storm seemed to go down, when it looked like the track was going to go further south, some people said they were going to stay. There's one gas station in town. They said they were going to stop selling gas at 11. We saw a whole bunch of people get in line to get that last bit of gas and get out of here. We're watching this water now. All of this is with only about 45 minutes worth of rain so far. This will pick up dramatically when the next rain ban hits, I think, Craig. There are there are some who have said here in Wilmington that uh, this city could end up getting roughly six, seven months worth of rain in three days. Garrett, hey, Garrett, thank you. Dawn Allen has lived here in Wilmington her entire life, uh, just about three miles away from where we stand right now. Dawn and her husband have two kids. Uh, you're not evacuating, as I understand it, that, correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Um, why? Uh, well, it, mainly it's financial reasons. You know, people have offered us free places to stay, but it still takes gas money and food, water, everything else once you get there. And then the fear of not knowing when you can get back home. I've heard that from a number of people, this, this idea that even if they were able to get out, that it might take one, two, if not longer, maybe even three weeks to get back in. 
Yes, sir. That's exactly. We've seen it happen with, we had a hurricane two, two years ago and it was not nearly this large of a system and it took people a week and a half to get back home. So you can't afford to get out. You're going to hunker down. What sort of precautions are you taking? Well, we've got enough food and water to last at least a week and a half. Um, we've taped up our windows and have all our devices charged. We have extra external battery packs and plenty of board games and cards for the kids to play. Put some water in the bathtub. Exactly. Water, water in the bathtub, plenty of water filled up in jugs all over the place. And how are the kids doing? How are their, how are their spirits? Are they getting stir crazy yet? No, not yet. They, they still have their electronics, so they're, they're happy. So as they're fine. As long as they can, yeah. they can get on the iPad. Exactly. They, yeah. As long as they have their electronics, they're happy. And I'm like, play with them as long as you can, because um, once the power goes out, that's it. You're done. It's, it's interesting because over the last few days, you've heard so many local officials, state officials, national officials say, get out, get out, get out. And, and you don't hear a lot of uh, conversations being had about people who can't afford to get out. Exactly. And that, that is a real thing. A, a lot. I know more people who are staying than people who are left. And, you know, I'm not the only one who has financial reasons. You know, I also have medical reasons I'm not leaving. Um, it, it's just, it's a sad situation that so many are put in. They have to pick whether you leave or you stay and you risk everything, you know. Um, but we've been through storms before and thankfully this has been downgraded. So, you know, there's still de definitely danger out yeah. there, but, you know, we're going to ride it out. Be careful, okay? Thank you. All right, stay close, stay thank in touch. Let us know if you need anything. Don, thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.